Too often when we hear the term law and order, it refers not to law based on justice or even to problems of violent crime, but to protests and demonstrations challenging the status. Somehow I sense that people forget that black people are more the victims of crime in this country and violent crimes than any other people. It is the people in the ghetto who truly suffer. Black people are by nature not violent, or else we have the longest time fuse ever known to man. It was not black people who killed Abraham Lincoln, or John Kennedy, or Robert Kennedy, or Martin Luther King. It was white people who did these things. It was white people who lynched at least they documented 8,000 black people in the South and buried them alive. Not black people, but white people who did it. It is important that voices be raised now to say to students on campuses that when they assault the president of Cornell in the name of ending racism in South Africa, they are committing not only an indefensible action, but one which the conscience and the law of this country will not tolerate. And that for them to excuse that on the grounds that there are injustices elsewhere is as irrelevant as it is for the rest of society to respond to isolated and sometimes irresponsible misbehavior on campuses by silence to all the other injustices that have produced the incubation and the, te the toleration of the kinds of misbehavior that pockmark the campuses now. And I think if you want to understand what to do about all this, if we're not simply academics sitting back and pointing fingers, that you, the bar, the leadership of the communities of this country, have simply got to quit making these unequal responses to very unequal injustices so that you respond with much greater frenetic horror at smaller injustices and thus seem to continually prove that you are incapable of rising to the kinds of protests that would make society respond to that part of the next generation which has said things are not good enough, they cannot go on as they have gone before because this is in no, in no way what we've been told America is supposed to be. It's a very studied budget. It's been a very difficult job. After all, we have limited money to work with. You always will in a public education system. Far less money than you have options to use that money for. And we're having to make those difficult choices right now. Dr. Estes and his staff have done an excellent job of assembling the many, many choices that we have. And we're coming close to the final answer. Would you say that in the totality of the expenditure, it will probably be the same or near the same in final form? It's just the choices you're making now. You mean the changes that we're making between now and next week or two weeks? It's fairly close to what it will finally end up being. After all, it's been several months in process, and we only have two more weeks to work with it, so we can't make a whole lot of changes. But there will be some improvements.
Simply because people do not understand the program should not mean that we should shortchange over 4,000 teachers in order to make up for some salary inadequacies that have been perpetuated as years past. I maintain that all teachers ought to get $850 to $900 increase as opposed to the CTD proposal, which would give some teachers only $200, other teachers only $300, uh, which is much less than was promised by the state legislature. This has been his argument right along, and we really feel this is a rather fallacious argument. In Dallas, because of the inequity in the salary schedule and because of the numbers uh, of people involved, the Dallas salary raise very often has not been what the state has advertised it would be. And therefore, Dallas teachers seldom ever know what they're going to make until they arrive in their buildings on the first day of school and sign their contracts. Attorney Jack Beach was present and announced that he was employed by Assistant Chief Draper to obtain the facts from the council concerning the status of Chief, Chief Draper's sick leave. It was pointed out to Mr. Beach that the sick leave rules had been recently revised, but Chief Draper became ill prior to the revision. Motion was made by Councilman Lewis and seconded by Councilman Gresham to go on record that Chief Draper's sick leave is considered on the old plan since he became ill prior to the adoption of the new plan. Mr. Bailey, why did you and the other people initially resign? Over the retirement of Assistant Chief Draper. Well, now, the council has said that they have paid him in the past and they will continue to pay him uh, at least for eight or nine weeks into the future and possibly even longer than that. How do you feel about their action? It, it tickles me to death that this happened. This, but I hate it happened the way it did because River Oaks has went several years without any publicity and it really hurts me that this happened. Well, do you feel that the council has taken a fair step now? I sure do. From a historical standpoint, rock is a relatively new musical style. It was ushered in some 15 years ago with twanging guitars, grinding hips, and names like Elvis, Fats Domino, and Little Richard. But actually, musicians were playing rock 2,500 years ago. Well, the tones are dependent solely on the suspension of these sonorous stones, whereas our uh, xylophones, our pianos today, depend on uh, in xylophones, resonant uh, rosewood, and on pianos, ivory bars. The uh, stones are struck with wood mallets, and we also strike the xylophone with wood, uh, wood mallets. Uh, 